Apple products are great devices on their own, but they're even better together because of how seamlessly and easily they work together. Here are the best Apple ecosystem tips and tricks that you need to know. One of my favorite features is personal hotspot which allows my iPad and my Mac to connect to my iPhone network if ever Wi-Fi is not available or if the Wi-Fi signal drops all of a sudden. So as long as my Apple devices are signed into the same Apple ID and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are turned on, on let's say my iPad, if it were to all of a sudden lose Wi-Fi connection, I can go into settings and go to Wi-Fi and I should see my network's Brook iPhone. So I can click and connect to Brook iPhone network, and then it's pulling the data from my phone so I can still use my iPad. I can still search the web, check emails, whatever I'm doing that requires internet, I can still do it. It will be using the data from my phone. So just keep that in mind that it is gonna start pulling your phone data, but in a pinch, it is a great option if I really need Wi-Fi on my Mac or my iPad, or if all of a sudden I lose connection and I want to keep working. If you've had an iPhone for a while, you probably have heard of AirDrop and you know that you can use it to send photos and files or pretty much anything to someone else with an iPhone or an Apple device. But the way I use AirDrop daily is actually between my own devices. So if I wanted to AirDrop photos from my iPhone to my Mac, it's really easy to do. I would just go into photos on my iPhone and select the photos that I want to airdrop, press the share button in the bottom left, and then you'll sometimes get a quick airdrop button of one of your devices. So like conveniently today, the quick device is my Mac, so it is correct, but if it's not, you do have an airdrop button below that. You can click and any of your devices that are logged in to the same Apple ID, with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth turned on should appear here and you can select the appropriate device this way. So I would just select my MacBook and pretty quickly you'll see it's arrived already on my MacBook and it opens in my downloads folder once it's fully downloaded. So this is a great option if I'm taking a lot of photos or even videos that just take quite a while to upload to iCloud. If I don't wanna wait, I'll just airdrop them between my devices this quickly. This next one is automatic AirPods switching and people either love it or hate it. I personally, I love it, but I will also show you how to turn it off in case you're someone who hates it. So let's say I'm listening to music on my iPad with my headphones and you can see I'm connected here at the bottom, but all of a sudden I get the sudden urge that I wanna watch a YouTube video on my Mac. So I can pull up the YouTube video and I'm still listening to music. Once I press play on the Mac, you'll see it says connected to AirPods Pro. And it also said it, if I redo this, it also says AirPods Pro move to Mac on the top of the iPad. So whenever I press play, the AirPods automatically switch to that device. It's awesome. But as I mentioned, if you are someone that finds this feature really annoying, you can turn it off in settings on your individual devices. So if I wanna turn it off on my iPad, I would just go into settings and Bluetooth and then find my AirPod Pro 2s and click the little I on the right. And then I would just scroll down until I see connect to this iPad. I have it on automatically. If to turn it off, you would just switch it to when last connected to this iPad. And then you could do the same thing on each of your individual devices. The Find My app is great for knowing where your devices are at any time, but you can also turn on notifications so that you're notified if ever you leave one behind. So I would just make sure I'm on the devices tab at the bottom, and then I would see a list of all my devices. And if I were to select my iPad Pro, towards the bottom, you'll see notify when left behind. You would just click in to toggle that on. And you can also set an exception in case you don't wanna be notified when let's say you leave home, but you do wanna be notified if you're away on vacation. If you have an Apple Watch, you can use your phone to ping your watch if you're looking for it. So on my iPhone, I would go into my control center and I have the icon here, the little watch icon is what you're looking for. And then I would just press on that and it'll make a noise on my watch. 
so I can find it. But you can do the opposite as well. So I can also use my watch to find my phone. So on my watch, if I press the button on the side, it'll open the control center and then you'll see the icon with the phone. When I click on that, it'll make a noise on my phone so I can find the phone. Another option is if you long press on that same icon, it'll also light up the flashlight on your phone to make it even easier to find. So if I long press on it, you'll see the flashlight goes off as well. I can also use my Apple Watch to quickly unlock my Mac instead of having to use my password or touch ID. So when I wake up my Mac, it quickly says unlocking with Apple Watch. And then on my Apple Watch, it'll also say that it unlocked my MacBook Pro. And this is a feature you would turn on in the settings on your Mac. So you would just go into settings and down to touch ID and password. And at the very bottom, you'll see an Apple Watch section and just make sure Apple Watch is toggled on. And of course I have to mention iCloud because it's so convenient that it syncs all of my content across all my devices in real time. So if I were to check off a reminder on my iPhone, you'll see it almost immediately updates it on my Mac as well. So to make sure your apps are syncing the way you want them to sync, you would just go into settings on your devices and click on your name and profile picture at the top. You'll then see iCloud, click on that, and you can go down to saved to iCloud, click see all if you're on a Mac, and then just make sure all the ones you want turned on and the ones you want to sync are indeed turned on and toggled on. And then you would just hit done. And then I would just recommend you do the same on all of your individual devices to make sure the sync is set up the same way. One of the apps that will sync over iCloud is Messages. So any of your iMessages that you get on your phone, you'll also be able to see on your iPad and Mac as well, as long as you've turned it on in iCloud. But what will not sync by default is any of the text messages. So any of the green bubble messages you receive will only go to your phone. There is an easy way to turn on text message forwarding to your other Apple devices, but it needs to be turned on in settings on your iPhone. So if I go into settings and down to apps, I'll just scroll down until I find messages and then scroll down again until you see text message forwarding and click into that. And then you would just make sure that all of your other Apple devices have this text message forwarding turned on. Another great feature is handoff, which allows you to start something on one device and pick it up or hand it off to another device to continue working on it. So let's say I start taking a note on my phone, but then I want to actually sit down at my desk to use my Mac and continue where I left off. So if I go over to the dock on my Mac, the very right, I'll see the notes app with a little iPhone icon in the top right. And it'll also tell me from iPhone 16 Pro Max. So if I click on this note, it brings me directly into the same note I just started on my iPhone. But if I wanted to do the reverse, if I wanted to hand something off from my Mac to either my iPhone or my iPad, it's a little bit different. So here I have a Safari tab open on my Mac. To get it on my iPhone, I would go to the app switcher by just swiping up from the bottom of my screen. And then at the very bottom, it'll say Safari from MacBook Pro. I can just click on that and it'll bring me right in to the same web page. To get handoff to work, like most of the features I've shown today, your devices have to be connected to the same Apple ID, Wi-Fi has to be turned on and Bluetooth has to be turned on, but you also need to turn on the handoff setting on your device. So in settings, you're gonna go into general and then airplay and continuity, and you'll see handoff towards the middle. Just make sure that's toggled on and do the same on each of your individual devices as well. So now that we've made sure handoff is turned on on all of our devices, we can also start using the universal clipboard feature, which allows us to copy something on one device and paste it on another. So for example, on my iPhone, if I go into photos and I copy this photo, I can now paste it on my MacBook. And I could paste it anywhere, in messages, in an email, or like I'm about to do in Apple Notes. And I can use the right click and paste to do this, but Universal Clipboard also supports gestures and keyboard shortcuts. 
So instead, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Command V to paste, and it's pasted the photo right in my notes. And this feature is not exclusive to photos only. You can also copy and paste text as well as files between any of your devices. The next great feature that works with handoff turned on is the sidecar feature, which allows me to use my iPad as a second monitor or a second screen for my Mac. So on my Mac, if I go up to the control center and select the displays button, I'll be able to mirror or extend my Mac to my iPad Pro. And right now it's in mirroring mode. So whatever is on my Mac screen is now also on my iPad screen. And I do find this could be useful when I want to use my Apple Pencil. So if I wanted to mark up this photo now, I can't do that on my Mac because the Apple Pencil is not compatible with the Mac, but using this sidecar feature, I can. So if on my iPad, I click this little arrow on the photo and select markup, and you'll notice the same thing is happening on both screens. I can then use my Apple Pencil and draw on this photo and see the live drawings appear on my Mac as well. So if you are someone that draws or uses the Apple Pencil a lot, this could be a really great option for you because you can see what you're doing on two screens and often your Mac is a bigger screen so you can see even more detail. The other option is to extend your display. So if I click on the display button here in my menu bar, and switch from mirror to use as extended display. Now these are gonna operate differently. So I can take my Safari window, let's say, and drag it onto my iPad. Another way I can do that is to go to the green dot at the top and say, move to Brook iPad. And then that window will immediately go over to my iPad. And so this is great because it allows me to use my iPad, let's say to read an article or research something and then use my Mac with my Mac keyboard to take notes at the exact same time, but on different screens. If you wanna know even more about this sidecar feature and what's possible, you should watch this video next, which is a complete sidecar tutorial. So that's it, have a great day, bye.